Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about writing radical functions given a graph picture. You'll notice that in each one, you're already given a graph. We just need to figure out what would the equation of the radical be. A few things we need to lay out first. Each one will start out y equals, and then we'll either decide are we going to be positive or negative. If we're positive, that just means that it's standard. I've shown you just a regular non-flipped radical right here. But if it's negative, that means it's reflected over the x-axis. So I'll show you in a different color. If we have a negative right there, it means that this standard radical will actually look like this. It will move in that direction. Now our a, that's our number of units up or down from end point to the next point. So our end point is going to be, you see it right here, it's wherever this ends, not the arrow side, but the end point side. Underneath the radical, we have either a positive, which we wouldn't see, there wouldn't be a plus there, it would just be blank, or we have a negative. Now again, a positive means no reflection over the y-axis, but a negative means we are reflecting over the y-axis. So if this one only is negative, that would be like this, reflecting over the y-axis. So notice that's going from this standard to flipping over the y-axis to now being the green. Now what's important to note is if these are both negative, if it's a reflection over the x-axis and a reflection over the y-axis, if they're both negative, that would be like this purple one down here. Okay, that would be from this black one, that would be a reflection over the y and then another reflection over the x. So that would be this one going in that direction. Our x is just going to stay x and then our h is going to be the x value of the end point and the sign is going to be the opposite. So we're just going to figure out what, and we'll do that first, we'll figure out what's the end point, we'll flip the sign and that's what's going to go in here. Now the k on the outside, that's the y value of the endpoint. And notice I don't say anything about the sign here. It's because whatever the sign is of the endpoint, if it's positive, this will be positive. If it's negative, this will be negative. So let's dive right in. For this first one, when we want to know the endpoint, so we want to know this point. So this point falls at 3 on the x-axis, 4 on the y-axis. So the endpoint is 3 comma 4. Now when we go to write our equation we'll always start with our y equals and we would look at is it reflected over the x-axis? Is this reflected over the x-axis? Is it going this way? Or is it going this way? No. This is just standard just like that first one we had drawn so we don't need a negative here. Now remember our a is our number of units up or down from the end point to the next point. So when I go from this point to that point, how many units have I moved up? Well, in this case, I've moved up one, two units, right? So that tells me my A value is two. Now I'd wanna go ahead and put in my square root. Is this reflected over the Y axis? Did I reflect it all this way? No, right? We said at the beginning this was just kind of a standard direction. So in that case, I don't need to put a plus there. It's just assumed. I can go ahead and write my x. And now I need an h, but remember the sign is opposite. It's my x value of the endpoint, which would be 3, but it's not going to be positive 3. We're going to make it negative 3 because it's the opposite sign. And then my k on the outside is just my y value of the endpoint, positive 4, and we'll keep that sign positive 4. So there is your equation for that picture. Okay, let's look at this next one. So first thing we want to do is figure out the end point, which would be this right here. So that point falls at negative 1, negative 1. So we'll go ahead and note that. For our equation, we'll go ahead and say y equals. We would want to ask ourselves now, is it reflected over the x-axis. So notice how we had the standard and then we reflected it over the x-axis and that gave us this blue. Well, that's what we're seeing here. It's pointing in this direction, flipped. We know, yes, this is reflected, so we can go ahead and put a negative out front. A 
our number of units up or down from the end point to the next point. So notice here from negative 1 to the next point at negative 2 we just went one unit. So we'll write that as negative 1. Now we'll add in our square root. Now this is not reflected over the y-axis. That would mean the arrow would be going this way or this way, and it's not. It's going this way. So we know it's not reflected over the y-axis, so this is positive. So we can go ahead and just write our x. And now we need the opposite sign of the x value of our endpoint. So in this case, it's a negative 1. So I just want the opposite sign. I want to make it a plus 1. Now the k is our y value of the endpoint, exactly the sign it is. In this case, that's minus 1, so we just throw away minus 1. And there's my equation for this picture. Now, it is important to note, you don't have to put that 1 there. We could rewrite this as y equals just negative, and then have our square root x plus 1 minus 1. Both of these say the same thing. You don't have to see that 1 right there. It's understood. Okay, let's look at two more together. For this one, our end point would be a negative 3, positive 1. So when we go to write our equation, we'll have our y equals. Now, notice, is it reflected over the x-axis? If we have that regular one right here, did we reflect it over the x-axis? No. I can definitely tell we reflected it over the y-axis. So we do not need a negative out front but we will need a negative underneath the radical. We'll get there. So we don't need that, but let's look at what our a value would be. From the end point to the next point, we moved up one, two, three units. So that means we have a y equals three. Next, we have our square root. Now we already said, clearly this is reflected over the y-axis, so that means we need a negative. It's the first time we've seen that. We'll have our parenthesis x. Notice on the other two, I didn't have to have the parenthesis because I didn't have a negative. But now that I do, I must show this parenthesis. And we'll see why that's important in just a second. Okay, now remember it's right here my h is the opposite of my x value endpoint. So that would be instead of negative 3, it's going to be plus 3. And my k value is positive 1. That's my y value of the endpoint. So why this is important to have these parentheses here is because some people will go ahead and distribute this negative into that parentheses set. So this same equation could look like this. y equals 3, and then we have our square root. But they distribute this negative 1. So they say negative 1 times x is negative x. And negative 1 times positive 3 is a negative 3. Plus one. So notice these two say the exact same thing, but they definitely look different. And you have to be careful because if you saw this and they told you to graph it, a lot of students would look there and they just automatically go, okay, so it's opposite of negative three, so my endpoint should be positive three. And we obviously see that's not true, right? So you always have to look here to see is that x negative? Because if it is, that means they d they've already taken that negative and distributed it to get here. It would be the same sign as my endpoint. That can be really tricky. So just be careful. I prefer to write it like this because I think it's just more clear, but you'll definitely see it distributed as well. Okay, last one. So for this one, our endpoint is positive 1, positive 2. And when I go to write my equation, y equals, notice this one is that 1, and it was the purple one that we drew on the first page, that it's going in this direction, which means it's been reflected over the y-axis and then reflected again over the x-axis. So this is where I'm going to have two negatives, one on the outside and the inside. So I've got the first negative, which shows it's reflected over the x-axis. Now I want to know my a. So from my end point to my next point, I moved one, two, three units. So we've got y equals negative three. Now I'll have my radical. 
We already said this is clearly reflected over the y-axis, so that means I need a negative here as well, parentheses, so important, our x. Now we need the opposite sign of the x value of the endpoint, so that's a positive one, so we need a negative one. And on the outside, plus k is our positive two. That's our y value of the endpoint. And again, just like here, we could rewrite this actually distributing that negative, and you probably will see that at some point. So that would be a negative three, and if we were to distribute that negative one times x is negative x, negative one times negative one is a positive one, and then we'd have our plus two on the outside. So these are both correct. Okay, here's one for you guys to try. I will post the answer in the video description below. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.